How is it that we prevent burnout as ecologists and helping practitioners? Now, is it okay if I'm completely honest with you here? Right, this isn't one of my strength areas in life. In fact, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, um, twice a year, generally, all right, as a rule of thumb, I will um, end up having to take a week out, sometimes a little bit longer, due to burnout. Now, since I was in my teens, I had this mindset, this approach to life, I will go, 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 go. I can remember spending time in the military back at the age of 16, 17 years old. I had this old corporal named Corporal Samuel. And uh, one of my first few days in the military, I remember being um, made to stand outside in this courtyard in my boxer shorts in the middle of October. It was freezing cold. It was pouring down with rain and I was a skinny little boy at the time. I had to hold this rifle above my head while screaming out at the top of my lungs, I will strive for excellence in everything that I do. I will strive for excellence in everything that I do. Now, for the first 20 minutes, this was okay because I was relatively strong back then, but after half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, the arms started getting a little bit weary until our attitude towards our situation began to change. Now, I don't know whether I was the first or the last to see the purpose of this exercise, all right? Granted, our arms were getting tired, they were getting weak, they were starting to hurt. It wasn't, um, it, was, it was a less than ideal situation that we were in. But what we all discovered that day and what we learned was that sometimes it's not the situations and the circumstances that we find ourselves in in life that, that burn us out. It's in fact the attitude that we take. Because as soon as we embraced this, this sentence that we were actually screaming out, I will strive for excellence in everything that I do, right? Mind over matter. The arms became outstretched. And yeah, the weight didn't go, but we were so committed and so focused on just doing what we were doing in that precise moment with excellence. Now granted, what we were doing was irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant, but the principle that I learned that day has set the course for pretty much the rest of my life. Now, how does this idea link back to the burnout that I mentioned just a few moments earlier? Well, all right, um, I'm a little bit older today than what I was back when I was 16 years old. So back then, when I could go two or three days without any sleep today, if I don't get my six, seven hours a night, all right, I turn into grumpy bear, right? That's very much the case. And if I go six months, right, going hard, taking the approach that I generally tend to take, just doing everything with excellence, then eventually um, <laughs> the point comes where something breaks and that's it, I end up physically exhausted. Now I'm being completely honest with you here because I know that I'm speaking to a bunch of real life human beings. Granted, we can have all the academic knowledge and all the principles and all the practices, but this element, this, this part of ecology is about, is about you building yourself up. It's about you learning how to take better care of yourself. Over the years, burnout has been defined as our body's response to over-commitment. Now, I've taken this from online, from the web, by the way. It's also been defined as the mind's response to changes in our motivation. Burnout has also been defined as an emotional response to becoming alienated in work or isolated or something like this. And it's an overall response to excessive demands being placed upon us by other people. People. Now, yeah, granted, these definitions are all valid when describing burnout. And regardless of what we relate to the most out of these four points, burnout does affect us all mentally, emotionally, and physically, especially as helping practitioners when some of us will have the tendency to commit to the process of giving out to other people more than what we get back. Uh, my, my first ever mentor, Pete, all right, once shared this crucial life lesson with me. He suggested that life, our life, is kind of like a fountain, all right? If you were to picture a fountain right now, um, say there was a fountain in the local park, and this fountain, all of the local wildlife come and they drink out the fountain. Well, if more water is getting taken out of this fountain than what's going into it, then the fountain eventually dries up, doesn't it? All right, and what is true for fountains is true for us as ecologists and helping practitioners. If we are giving out more on a day-to-day -day basis than what we're 
getting back in return. And this could be through family commitments, through our professional commitments, in our relationships. If we surround ourselves by needy people, and you know what I mean by needy people, then eventually we will turn out the same way as the fountain. We will run dry. And this, in my experience, is one of the main causes of burnout. All right, so today I'm hoping that as a community we can get a pretty good discussion going around this topic. Why? Because I don't want to see you guys getting burnt out through your endeavours, especially when your intention is just to help people. So today's question, burnout is very, very common in the helping professions. So what precautionary measures do you currently take to minimise your chances of experiencing burnout? And what guidance or what advice would you freely be willing to share with your fellow ecology peers? That's it today, uh, for today, folks. That's today's question, and I'll look forward to hearing and reading your responses in the discussion forum.